Hey, what's up guys? Back at you with another video. And today we're taking a look at the Roland J6 chord synthesizer that you can see here. And I'm super excited to actually finally get to dig into this hardware unit because it's been back ordered for quite a while. And yeah, it's just, it's nice to finally get my hands on one of them. Think of the Roland J6 as a massive chord generator that has hundreds of chord genres, has different playing styles and variations. And of course we have a chord sequencer with this that we can map out all of our different variations and phrases with, which is a ton of fun. Not only that, but you can take this little hardware unit and connect it directly to your laptop. So what that means is you can actually take this Roland J6 and control any of your VST plugins and run it directly into the program so that you can use this as a chord player variation style player and you can really use any sound generator that you want and play it straight through the j6 into your daw and not only that but if you wanted to sample the raw sounds that you get with the j6 synthesizer you can record that directly into your daw of choice as well because it'll record that audio directly so both midi and audio can be transferred directly into the daw of your choice and you can take this on the go because it has a lithium ion battery meaning you can plug headphones into it and not need to be connected to any power source and jam out and create chord progressions on the fly Anyways, that's enough of a preface of what the J6 is. Let's jump into it and I'll show you all the major functions. Okay, first let's talk about the J6's built-in sounds because this includes a four voice Juno 60 synth engine and it has 64 ready to play synth presets derived from the original Juno 60 and it really is full flavored in all aspects. And on top of the built-in sounds, the 64 presets, we have also filter and envelope controls for shaping synth sounds in real time. And we also have a high quality delay and reverb effect to customize along with each and every preset. And the cool thing with the J6 versus the T8, with each pattern that you save to this machine, it actually saves your synth presets and all of your effect sounds as they are into the pattern, which I find so useful because you don't have to try to recall the sound that you had when you save the pattern. It's all baked into the pattern that you save to the J6. Okay, to access all the synth presets, all you have to do is press sound, and then you can use the tempo slash value button to scroll through all the different presets. And like I said, there's 64 that come along with it. And once you press the keys, you can start to hear what each one sounds like. And you can also use the buttons up here to switch between the different presets for each bank. And then you can hold sound and then one of these buttons to change the bank number. So we're on one right now, bank one. And if we wanna to go to bank two, we just press two while holding the sound button. And then we can scroll through the different presets once we've confirmed that we want bank two. So now we can scroll through these presets. You can press hold and then it just plays that note. And we wanna make sure we have a little bit more decay. And then while playing through these, we can also change the filter in the envelope settings. And I got the whole button on, so I'm gonna turn that off. Now you can change the attack time with some of these synth presets by holding shift and then turning the envelope knob. Go to a different preset. And we can also change the delay time. And then if we wanna change the timing for the delay, we can hold shift and then turn the delay knob. And we have all the typical times that we can change. And then we have reverb as well. Go back out to sound. So that's how you change the different sound presets. And like I said, you can keep scrolling all the way through this. And there's eight banks of eight presets each. And that gives you a total of 64 presets. Okay, the next thing I wanna take a look at is chord genres. And we can access this by holding shift and pressing the chord button. And then we can scroll through all 100 different chord genres that is supplied inside of the Roland J6. And now there's a really useful chord set list on Roland's website if you just type into Google Roland J6 manual. 
Inside the manual, there's a chord set list that gives you all the different genres that are included in these chord genres. So we have pop, there's jazz, blues, triad major, triad minor, and then there's a whole bunch of different flavors with fourth stacks, octave stacks, fifth stacks. They have pop synth, pop, synth wave, cinematic, new age. There's just so many different chord genres to take a look at, and there's a lot of inspiring chord sets to play around with. I highly recommend having Roland's website pulled up simultaneously as you're going through these different chord genres so you kind of have a reference of what genre you're actually dealing with when you're experimenting with these chord sets. So right now we're on chord set 17 and inside of the Roland manual it says this is a utility chord set. We can press chord to get out of it and then just experiment to see what this sounds like. And maybe we'll change our sound preset. Let's change this attack to be pretty quick. It's a funny sound. Let's go to a different one. Let's maybe go to one of the first ones. And then we'll go back into the chord genre. So shift chord. And let's experiment with something a little more normal. Let's go to the pop synth chord genre. And let's press chord. I like that chord. Let's do another one. Let's go to this one that says cinematic, which is 33. Yeah, it does sound cinematic. Let's try, there's another one that says synth wave. There's actually quite a few that are synth wave, so 41 and on. And this is probably a good time to explore the style and variation controls. So if we turn on the style button, and then we turn this knob, it's gonna give us eight different banks of styles, and then we can change the variation for each of those styles with this knob. So let's explore the first ones. The first ones are gonna be more arpeggiated type chord playing styles. Let's see what we get. And let's uh, increase the tempo here. And always press hold. And then we can change the variation again. And if you want to change octaves, we can hold shift and then press the octave button. Let's try a different chord genre. Another synth wave one. Definitely sound synth wave. Okay, now let's take a look at patterns. Now that we have a chord genre that we like and we have some chords that we want to sequence, we need to figure out how to put this into a pattern. So if I press the pattern button, we can see that we're currently on bank three, pattern four, and I don't necessarily want to override what I've created on this pattern. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna copy this pattern to another slot within bank three. So how we do this is we first go to shift, hold it down and then we go to menu and then we can change with this tempo value knob and wait until we see copy and copies right there and then in order to copy you just press enter the second key and then now we can change this to be bank three pattern five and then we can press enter again and then it lets us know that it's copied it so we can exit out of the menu functions and now we'll go to bank three, pattern five, 
and we can now record into this slot using the same sound. Because if we were to just go to the next pattern and write in it, it would go to a different sound. Because each pattern has its own synth preset. So let's go back to Bank 3 Pattern 5. And what I'll do is I'll just clear this copied pattern by holding shift and then clear and then press enter. And now nothing is on this chord sequencer. We can enter a brand new chord progression into it. Okay, in order to record or program a chord sequencer pattern, all you have to do is start by pressing your first step. And then it lets you know you're on step one. And you can go ahead and enter in your first chord. Now I want to make sure that I have the playing style turned on. So we'll press the style button, make sure it's turned on. And then we'll enter in our first chord. Then we can go to step two, make sure the style button is on, and then enter our second chord. Go to step three, make sure our style button is on, and then enter our third chord in. Now, how you change the pattern length, because you can actually make it all eight steps, or you can go beyond that and make it more steps, but I only want three steps within this chord progression. So how we change this is we go to shift and last, and then we can change how many steps it is right here. And then we, after we're done, we can just hit exit. And now when we hear this play back, it should have our chord progression. After we go ahead and press step three, Now, if you want each step to be a little bit longer, you can change that as well. And how we get to this is by holding shift and then menu, and then we'll scroll until we see beat, which is right here, and then press enter, and then we can change the length right here. I'll leave it at four and then press exit, and let's hear that now. And I think I want to change this to be one step less. So we'll go back into B and then change this to three and then press exit and exit one more time. So that's how you program a chord sequence. Now, one thing to really note is that all your steps don't have to have the same playing style. They can have different playing styles per step. So let's start with a brand new sound. We'll go into the sound button and change our preset again. Now let's change our chord genre. Change our octave. And let's change the style. And maybe let's change our tempo. like that. So let's go ahead and program that. We'll go and clear our last pattern out. Press shift and clear and then enter to clear that pattern out. Okay, let's go and program something with that. So we'll go to the first step and then turn the style button on. 
Second step, style button on. And then third step, we'll change the variation here to be variation four. After we turn the button on, let's change it to a different variation. And let's see what that sounds like. So that's how you change the style slash variation for each step and it will actually retain that style change which is really cool you can come up with really unique chord progressions and they're not super static they're really interesting and you can make them as complex as you want them to be now in order to save your pattern it's super simple all you do is you press shift and then write and then you can change between pattern or saving everything i usually just do saving all so we'll go ahead and press enter and it saved that pattern. And then if we press play, we hear our pattern back. Okay, let's try something different now and we'll go back to the chord genres and look for something different. Turn off the playing style. Yeah, that'll work. Let's um, go into the different playing styles though. And let's see what we got. So this would be a good time to show you how to insert a rest within your chord sequence. So let's go ahead and get out of the chord genre and we can start a new pattern. And like I showed you last time, we're gonna copy this pattern over so we don't lose this sound. So we're gonna to go to the menu and then scroll over until we see copy. Okay, and then press enter. And we're gonna to go to bank three and sound, I think we're on six now. And then enter, exit. Okay, let's clear this pattern out enter and then we'll start on this chord rest and then go to this chord so we'll start with first step here turn on the playing style step two style go to step three and then here's where we can insert a rest and we'll go to shift and menu and then we'll scroll until we see insert, which is right here. And then because we're on step three, you can just press enter. And it lets us know that it just put a rest into that. Now we can go on to step four. Actually, let's exit out of the menu first. And then we'll go to step four. Turn on the playing style. And I think it was this chord that we wanted next. And then we'll add another one of those. We'll go to step five. Okay, and then you can see that we have two chords on these first two steps, a rest where it's darkened out, and then steps four and five have that last chord. Now we can complete the sequence just by pressing step five, and we can play it back to hear what it sounds like. And just like with all the other patterns that we made, we can always change the duration for each step. We just go back into shift and menu, and then we can go to beat. And experiment with a different length. So let's uh, do two. And then exit, see what that sounds like. Yeah, I like how that sounds. So that's how you insert a rest step into your chord sequence. Okay, let's go ahead and press exit to get out of the menu and then exit again. 
And let's actually jump over to the last thing that I wanna show you, which is how you can connect this directly to your DAW. And for Ableton Live, it's exceptionally simple because of the way Ableton Live handles MIDI, but you don't really have to do much. It's really set to go. So let's jump into Ableton Live and I'll show you how you can transfer MIDI and audio. Okay, so inside of Ableton Live, if you have a MIDI track set up, so I have this first track right here, that's a MIDI track, and I can drag any plugin into it that I want. And I just dragged in complete control here, and I'm gonna use a new synth that just came out from Native Instruments called Ignition Keys, and I have this preset favorited down here called Pluck Low, it's right here. And we can just close some of this stuff up. But now I can trigger the sounds from this VST plugin directly from the J6 chord synthesizer because it's automatically set up inside Ableton Live to receive all incoming MIDI channels. So if I press play on the J6, you'll hear that it's actually triggering the synthesizer. And let's go ahead and change the pattern here on the J6. Let's try pattern four here. So you can hear all of this stuff is being triggered by the J6. So if I press stop on the J6, I can change my preset to something else here. Let's try lightning in a bottle. And then of course I have control over all the macros inside my plugin and while it's being triggered by the MIDI from the J6. Let's try music box. So it's a super useful way to use the J6 to come up with different chord ideas and trigger it directly inside of your DAW of choice. Now I'm not sure if this works with every digital audio workstation. I'm sure it probably does for the most part. I think Cubase can do it and Logic, but I just like how on Ableton Live, all you have to literally do is plug the USB-C to USB-A directly into your computer and you can automatically trigger any VST plugin with a J6 chord synthesizer. Okay, and then the last thing, if you want to capture the raw audio directly from the J6, all you have to do is go to your audio settings inside Ableton Live, it's command comma, and then you can change the input device for audio to be the J6. Now, as soon as I change this, you're not gonna be able to hear my voice because I'm currently using the Scarlett 2i2 to record my microphone, but I'm gonna go ahead and change the setting now and show you how you can record directly into Ableton Live. So I'm gonna go ahead and change this to the J6 and I'll be back in a second. Okay, as you can see, it recorded directly into Ableton Live, and then we can just loop the part that we want. So I'm gonna go into the clip view here and then press Command L. And when we play this back, it's gonna loop over this section. So we have that raw audio data inside of Ableton Live now. So as you can see, you can do whatever you want with that audio once you've recorded it into your digital audio workstation. Oh, and one last thing that I wanna mention is that you can actually record in the MIDI data from the J6 directly into your MIDI track. And you can just simply hit the record clip button and then press play on the J6. then press stop and then you have all this MIDI data that you've recorded directly into Ableton Live using just the J6. And then we can just select all this and press command A and then command L to loop it. And then we have all that MIDI data directly inside of Ableton Live. So just another trick that you can 
record the information directly from the J6 into Ableton Live and you have that for future reference. And then if you wanted to like create a new pattern and then record into a new clip slot, you could do that as well. Anyways guys, that's pretty much it for this video. If you're interested in the Roland J6 chord synthesizer, I've left a link below where you can learn more about it or if you wanna pick one up, you can also buy it as well. I just wanna say thanks to Zounds.com for sending me the Roland J6 and I highly recommend it. For anybody that's looking for something to control their VSTs with, to make chord progressions on the go, or really just have a fun time experimenting with different kinds of music. The Roland J6 has a ton of on the spot inspiration to get any of your music projects started. All right guys, that's pretty much it and I'll catch you in the next video.